Let's get some more insight on the industry now with Clarence Otis. He's the former CEO of Darden Restaurants. Clarence, it's great to see you again. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm just trying to figure out when we're talking about, you know, some pressures on the consumer and, you know, are we heading into a recession, inflation, all the rest of it. Why are restaurants suddenly having such a great start to the year? Or is it just a stock market mirage? No, no, no. I think it's real. Restaurants have seen very strong sales growth and really across the industry. When you look at casual dining, for example, uh, Black Box and Nap Trap uh, reported that same restaurant sales growth from March was up 5%. And that came after a very strong three months prior to that. If you took a look at what Darden reported and what they reported for their brands, as well as for, uh, for the industry. Now that said, uh, traffic is not so strong. And so again, in March, for example, casual dining, same restaurant, traffic was down three and a half percent. Wow. So clearly pricing is in that sort of mid to upper single digit percentage growth range. That makes a little more no. sense to me, obviously, that you'd have, you know, pricing offsetting weaker traffic clearance. What I don't understand, look, I know in the short term investors like that, they like profit margins. But is that really a sustainable trend? Because it feels like we're at the end of the road of being able to pass along price hikes. Well, I think it is. I think when you look at the market leaders in the restaurant industry, they took the opportunity during the pandemic to become much more efficient from a structural perspective. And so they did things like develop and introduce menu items that had stronger margins. They digitized the operation. So all of those things, plus the leverage that get you get, the operating leverage you get from sales growth, really helps offset that what has been mid single digit to again high uh, single digit inflation in labor and in food costs. So I think that all bodes well. Yeah. That said, of course, there's a um, there's been a, a a rebound coming out of the pandemic, and so a burst of pent up demand that will clearly ebb over time, uh, but and will certainly dissipate even more if you think about economic weakness. Right, right. Let me ask you about this, because you have some great granularity, and there's one data point in particular, as we see Chipotle is the only name in the red today. Again, it's had a great year. But you're saying just something to be aware of is that fast casual check averages are starting to approach those of casual dining value leaders. Tell me a little bit more about that. How, I mean, that must be like a 10-year trend. That it, and we all know how expensive some of the new options at Chipotle are if you get the, what is it, the Ajo steak or whatever. I mean, it's almost $20 to walk out of there. Well, I think uh, you hit on a, a very important point. And so one of the things that we have been seeing that reflects uh, the environment that we're in is trading down. And you typically see that. So from casual dining into quick service. Uh, so that trade is really to traditional trick, uh, quick service. I think the fast casual, because that check has really started to be pretty compressed, when you look at casual dining, will benefit a lot less than historically from the trade down. Uh, the stronger players like Chipotle will benefit, but those that aren't as strong as Chipotle, when they're starting to push up against the check averages at the casual dining value leaders, Olive Garden, Texas Roadhouse, they're not going to get that benefit. Yeah. We, you know, I, I know you're bullish on McDonald's, uh, on Chipotle. Tell me why Texas Roadhouse and Burger King. I mean, you know, again, I, I see the, the reporting about the Whopper, I, and I re totally respect everything that um, uh, Patrick Doyle did at, at Domino. So we know he's involved now at Burger King, and is that kind of a sleeper here to watch? It is. It is. I think what you're hearing out of Bur Burger King is really some very positive signals. They've done a lot of work to improve their core food offering. And so that is important. They've also done some work on their operation. And so they're faster. And that's also important. So I think you'll see continued strength there. Texas Roadhouse has long been a value leader. And so in this kind of environment, you'd expect them to do well. Same thing with Olive Garden. I mean, the report for the first quarter, which they uh, came out of uh, out with last month. So that their first quarter the most recent quarter, rather, would have been December, January, February. Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse had extraordinarily strong numbers. And so those market leaders that really lean into value will do well. But I think the industry itself uh, will do better than anticipated in a weaker environment. Because the other thing 
that we've seen is that the pandemic accelerated retirements. Hmm. And huh. yeah, people in their 50s, 60s, even into their 70s, is a, those are, that's a very important uh, age cohort for the full service players especially. And so they've got more time, more money, and that will be a tailwind that will help offset some of the, the headwind that, that we may see from the economic environment. A fascinating point. Uh, Clarence, love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Clarence Otis, former CEO of Darden Restaurants.